Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to the series where I'm showing you how to create your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum and how to build your own ICO. So this is video two in the series where I'm going to show you how to set up your project with the Truffle framework and get into coding your first smart contract. In particular, we're going to start writing the token contract for our project. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications with the bell below in order to see the next video when it comes out. And if it's already out, you can check the link at the end of this video or just watch the next video in the playlist. Let's go ahead and set up our application. The first thing that we'll need to do is open Ganache that you downloaded and installed in the first video where we installed the dependencies for our project. So once Ganache is open and you've got that running, uh, we have a local blockchain running. So let's kind of take a look around here and see what we've got. Uh, you can see when we started Ganache, Ganache gave us uh, 10 accounts for free. Each of these accounts has an address. This is the unique identifier that we will uh, use to connect to the Ethereum blockchain, and this will represent our account that we're connected with. And each of these accounts has you know, a balance of 100 fake Ether. This Ether isn't worth anything on their real Ethereum network. And you can also click this little key to see the private keys for our account. We will use this whenever we add our accounts to MetaMask when we build out the client side portion of our tutorial. Now that we have Ganache running, I'm going to uh, minimize this and go to our terminal. Now here we're going to create a project directory. We'll do that like this. We'll call our project token sale. And we will CD into our token sale. This is just to change directory. Now the next thing that we want to do is initialize a Truffle project inside of this directory. And in the last tutorial where I uh, showed you how to build an election decentralized application, we used a Truffle box, uh, gave us just some boilerplate code to get started quickly. Uh, and in this tutorial, I'm actually gonna do everything by hand. So I'm going to import all of the front end dependencies and kind of build everything that we need from a blank Truffle project. And this is so that you can know how to do this on your own without using something like a truffle box if you wanted to. So I will just run truffle init. That's going to just create a new truffle project in this directory. We can see that the uh, setup and the unboxing was successful. And this gives us just a few commands to start off with. Truffle compile, truffle migrate, truffle test. We'll use some of these later in this tutorial but here they are for reference for now. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is open this project in my text editor. Uh, I'm using Sublime Text and I have the uh, Subble uh, symlink configured. I've actually gotten a lot of questions about this from my previous tutorials. So basically this is just a uh, symlink or you know a command that I've configured uh, on my machine in order to open the project uh, in Sublime Text quickly. So once I execute that, we open Sublime Text and we can take a look around at our project. We can see what our truffle init command gave us. It gave us a few things. It gave us a contracts directory, a migrations directory, a test directory, and a few configuration files here. So we'll step through these kind of bit by bit. The uh, migration.sol file here in our, in our contract directory is really just a contract that handles uh, the migrations whenever we deploy our smart contracts to our blockchain. And this is also the directory that we will use in order to develop our other smart contracts. We'll put our token contract inside this folder and our token sale contract inside here. Uh, the next directory is the migrations directory, and this is um, where all of our migration files will go. We'll look at this first migration file. 
This is uh, the initial migration that's going to get run whenever we deploy our smart contracts. This is just taking the migration contract that we just saw from the migration directory. Now, let me make some comments about you know migrations here. So if you come from another you know development environment, maybe maybe web development, um, you probably are familiar with the migrations directory that allows you to you know migrate or change the state of your database that you're working on. And this is a you know similar concept in blockchain development with the Ethereum blockchain. We keep uh, track of the migrations that we want to run in files like this. And we need migrations whenever we deploy smart contracts because whenever we you know, deploy smart contracts, we are creating transactions and writing to the blockchain. We're actually you know, changing its state. Uh, and so when we push a smart contract to the blockchain, we are migrating the blockchain state from you know, point A to point B, which is uh, you know, not having this smart contract to having this smart contract and actually running the contracts constructor and whatever logic that that does. So, and this is just like how we would change state, uh, you know, with a development database or any kind of database when we're building a centralized application. And any time that we want to uh, create another smart contract, we will create a new file here um, that will, you know, handle migrating those smart contracts to the blockchain. And, you know, down here is our test directory, which is empty for now. Uh, this is where we will put the tests that we will write against our smart contract. We'll go ahead and write uh, our first test at the end of this video. And next you'll see some project configuration files. Now these two files basically do the same thing. Um, and it's kind of funny looking that there are two of them. And the reason why is because on some Windows machines, there's actually a conflict between the Truffle executable and the Truffle file name. So for example, uh, if on some machines, if you were to run Truffle, uh, this executable that we would run in the command line would conflict with this Truffle.js file. So Truffle gives you the option to uh, house all of your configuration in this Truffle uh, config file. Uh, I'm on a Mac and I don't ever have this problem. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the truffle.js file. But if you do have a problem, you may want to put your settings in this file. So let's go ahead and fill out some of the configuration for our project. Um, the first really configuration that we need is just to tell truffle uh, what our network is for development purposes. This essentially tells us, you know, how do we connect to our local blockchain? So I'm just going to do a networks key here. And I'm going to say development. And I'll say uh, the host is you know, localhost. And the port will be, let's check actually. Let's open Ganache. And see that uh, Ganache is running on port 7545. So we'll copy this, minimize Ganache. And we'll paste that here. And the network ID, we want it to honor all. We'll say this is, you know, match any network ID. All right, so there's our uh, initial project configuration. And that's kind of it for the overview of our project. Um, we'll add more, you know, directories and folders. Uh, and files here as we go, as we you know add more dependencies to our project, as we build out our client-side application and deploy it and things like that. But for now, uh, this is all the configuration that we really need to get started. Let's go ahead and start writing our first smart contract. So just a quick review, you know, a smart contract is a way of writing code that's going to get executed on the Ethereum blockchain. It's where all of the you know business logic of our token is going to live, and also our token sale. You know this is where we're going to write our ERC twenty token. And you know this smart contract is going to be in charge of reading and writing data to and from the blockchain, and it's also going to 
uh, be in charge of all the behavior of our cryptocurrency that we're writing. It'll be in charge of, you know, describing the basic attributes like the token's name, uh, the symbol for the token, you know, the price, you know, the total supply, how many tokens you know, actually exist. It's also going to govern the behavior of the token, like, uh, uh, you know, allowing users to buy and sell them and send them to others. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So the token and the token sale and our front end application together is really going to be a decentralized application or a DAP. It's really just a token sale website that has a client side and a, you know, a back end that lives on the blockchain. And, you know, our two smart contracts that we're going to write uh, work together to be the decentralized portion of our DAP. So let's get started by creating a new smart contract. I'm going to create a token contract. I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, file for our smart contract. I'll do, we'll create a new file in the contracts directory, contracts. Uh, we'll call this dap token dot soul. All right. And we'll go to our project here. Now, our dap token is the smart contract that's going to implement the ERC20 standard that we've talked about. It's going to be in charge of, you know, governing the behavior of our cryptocurrency itself. So let's kind of start coding this and see how all that works. First, we need to declare the version of Solidity that we're using. This is the Solidity programming language. We do that like this, pragma solidity. And we use a caret. We'll use version 0 0.4.2 for now and above. And the next thing is we want to declare our contract. And we do that like this, contract, dap token. And we give it some curly braces. Now, the first thing we want to do is kind of create some sort of test to ensure that we've created this contract properly and that we can, you know, set some sort of variable and uh, interact with the console just to make sure that this all works properly, you know, that we've set up our project and that we can, uh, you know, interact with the smart contract. So we'll do something simple. We'll do this by initializing the smart contract with the number of tokens available. Uh, that is, you know, how many tokens will actually ever exist for this DAP token. And to do this, we're going to need a couple of things. I'll just jot down some comments here. We need a constructor. We need something that's going to get run anytime our uh, smart contract is deployed. And this is actually going to set the value of the number of tokens that we'll have. We also need a way to set the tokens. And we need a way to read the total number of tokens. Oops. All right. So let's create the constructor. In Solidity, we can create a constructor by defining a function that has the same name as our contract. We do that like this. And we declare this function public. This is the visibility of the function. That's what we're doing here, setting the function's visibility. Um, because we want this uh, function to get run whenever the smart contract is deployed. Now, inside of this function, we can store the number of tokens that will exist, uh, and we can set it to a variable. So what we'll do is create a variable called total supply, and we'll set it equal to the total number of tokens. And 
let's just say that there are 1 million tokens available. So 1 million. All right, we'll save that. Now this variable here is going to represent a state variable. And a state variable in Solidity is going to be uh, a variable that's accessible to the entire contract. It's kind of like a uh, class variable, maybe, in another object-oriented language. And the, or sorry, the state variable for our smart contract will actually uh, write to disk. It will uh, write to storage. And in this case, uh, that means anytime we update this variable, it's actually going to write to the blockchain. So let's go ahead and store that variable. We need a way to store it, and we need a way to read it. We can do all that with one fell swoop, like this. We'll first uh, declare a data type, uint256. We'll call it public. And we will uh, name it the total supply. Oops. Save that. All right, let's see what we did. So whenever we declare a variable in Solidity, first we must declare the uh, data type of the variable. This is an unsigned integer, 256. And we'll see that the uh, visibility is set to public. And we call this total supply, which is the same name as the variable that we set here. So now whenever we you know, deploy our smart contract, we will uh, set the total supply to 1 million uh, inside the constructor. And that will save uh, to this value total supply, which is a state variable that's actually going to write uh, this data to the blockchain. This will be publicly visible and it'll create a transaction that's, that shows that this was set to 1 million tokens whenever the contract is migrated. Now let me say something about this as well. This is a, uh, uh, state variable that I've signed, uh, or I've made publicly visible. And with Solidity, whenever I declare a, vari a state variable public like this, uh, Solidity gives us a getter function for free. So normally I would have to write a function that returns this value, uh, but with this uh, public visibility, we don't have to, which is really nice. Also, total supply here, uh, is I, I didn't just choose this name arbitrarily. This actually comes from uh, the ERC-20 standard that we talked about quite a bit. Um, and I'll show you that right now. We can see that total supply is part of this standard. This is a uh, required function for the ERC-20 token that shows how many uh, tokens actually exist. And you can see that this is a, uh, a function here and we know that it's just a uh, reader because it's uh, a constant and it declares the return value and see that this is an unsigned integer of 256 and it returns total supply. So if we look back at our code here, it's an unsigned integer of 256 and it's total supply and you can see that uh, we're gonna get a function that looks like this in Solidity for free because we declare the state variable public. Let's try to interact with our smart contract in the Truffle console to see if we wired things up properly and to see if we can read the total supply that we just set. In order to do this, we need to create a migration. We'll go uh, into our project and we'll go to the migrations directory. And we'll see this initial migration that we have here. What we want to do is to create a new migration file that's going to be in charge of migrating our smart contracts. And we'll use this code as sort of the basis for doing that. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a new file. I'm going to create a new file called um, deploy contracts. And notice that uh, Whenever I do this, I prepend the file name with number two. And I do this because uh, we want to keep track of the order that uh, Truffle wants to run these migrations in. And we do that by just uh, numbering our files like this. 
So let's take uh, this code from our initial migrations file, copy it over just as a starting point. So let's modify everything that we need for our purposes. We'll start by changing migrations to uh, DAP token. All right, we'll save that. And let's kind of just step through uh, everything inside this migration file and see what it does. So first we are reading uh, the DAP token contract in the Solidity programming language uh, with this require function um, from our project directory. It's coming from here. And uh, we're actually assigning that to a variable here and we are deploying that, uh, that value in the, uh, uh, right here. So let me also explain artifacts here. So artifacts, uh, create, creating an artifact here basically allows us to create a contract abstraction that Truffle can use uh, to run in a JavaScript runtime environment. And this has you know, several different applications. This basically allows us to interact with our smart contract in any JavaScript runtime environment, like our Truffle console, um, or when we are writing tests, or when we are trying to interact with the smart contract with our client-side application. Um, that's really what Artifacts allows us to do. Now that we've created this migration, let's see if we can uh, run them. First, we'll uh, go to Ganache, make sure that it's running, uh, that everything's working. I'm good to go. We'll go back to our command line. Hope that we did everything correctly. Uh, so we'll try to run our migrations with Truffle. Migrate. Oops, it looks like we had a little hiccup there. So I'm going to rerun this migration. Uh, we'll do Truffle. Migrate. I'm going to pass it the reset flag. Let's see if this works. All right. That worked. So let's uh, open our console and try to read the total supply from our smart contract. We can open the Truffle console like this. Truffle console. Now the Truffle console um, is a JavaScript runtime environment where we can, you know, write JavaScript commands inside of here uh, in order to, you know, interact with our contract. So let's do that like this. We'll uh, use the variable name DAP token. This is the same variable that we got from our migration. It's the value here. So DAP token, and we'll say deployed. This gets us a deployed instance of our contract. And then pass it a function. All right. So let's talk about what we just did here. Again, this is DAP token. It's the variable name that we just saw from our migrations. We got a deployed instance of uh, this DAP token contract. And then we assigned uh, the value of that instance to a variable token. Now, let me make a mention of uh, this then function and what we had to do here. Because of the nature excuse me, because of the asynchronous nature of our smart contracts, you know, developing them relies heavily upon the use of JavaScript promises. And if you're unfamiliar with promises, they're basically a way of handling the eventual result of an asynchronous operation. In this case, a function call. You know, for example, I, I can't just say, you know, var... Uh, you know, token equals dap token uh, dot deployed. This won't work. Uh, if I did this, this would really just set this to a promise. Um, instead, you know, this deploy function is going to return a promise. And what I can do whenever this promise finishes is call the then function. And that's going to accept a callback function. 
and I can set the you know return value, which is going to get the deployed instance of the contract, and set it to this token variable. So if you're new to promises, they can be pretty confusing at first. Um, you can just read about them more on you know Google, but they're pretty essential to smart contract development uh, with the Truffle framework, and we use them a lot in our tests and on our client side application. Um, so feel free to brush up on them if you're uh, unfamiliar. So now that we have the instance of our app, let's see some things that it responds to. Token, we'll say uh, the address. We can see the address of the smart contract that's been deployed here. Now let's see if we can get the uh, total supply of the tokens. We'll do that like this. Uh, token, uh, total supply. And then we'll say then Call a function, say uh, s supply equals s. All right, we'll inspect that. Um, click enter. All right, we can see uh, our total supply of one million here. And when, whenever we uh, return, you know, uints that that are this big, you know, two fifty six. Um, the Truffle console and really uh, is going to give us a big number in JavaScript. That's because you know these unsigned integers that are that are very large might be bigger than uh, a number that JavaScript can handle natively. So I can get the uh, value like this to number. All right, see that's one million. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, now that gives us a good test for our uh, smart contract in the console. We'll go ahead and exit the console with exit. And you know, before we go on, let's make a quick mention about gas. Uh, whenever we you know ran our migrations and deployed our contracts to the blockchain, uh, it cost gas. That's because you know reading data from the Ethereum blockchain is free, but writing to it costs gas in the form of ether. So basically, we had to pay some amount of ether uh, or cryptocurrency, you know, whenever we uh, deploy our contracts to the blockchain. So I'll show you. In Ganache, you can see that the balance of our first account has gone down by, you know, some amount. And uh, Truffle, by default, uses uh, this first account in our uh, in our collection of accounts here as the uh, account that it uses to uh, run our deployments. Now let's uh, let's write a test to see if you know our total supply is correct for our token. In order to do this, I'm going to create a new test file. From the touch, we'll do something in the test directory. We'll call it dap token JS. All right, we have a new file here. Now let's say a quick word about testing. It's very important to test our smart contracts because you know the smart contract code is immutable. All the data on the blockchain is supposed to be immutable, and whenever we deploy our smart contract, you know we don't really want to change it. Um, so that's really important that we want our smart contract to be bug free, because if we deploy them and we found a bug, the best thing that we can do is disable our smart contract and deploy a new copy, and we want to avoid that if at all possible. So let's get into writing some tests. Testing our smart contract with Truffle is pretty easy. Um, it comes bundled with the uh, Mocha testing framework and the Chai assertion library. So we can use both of those things uh, to write our tests. We'll get started by importing our contract file, just like we did in our migrations. Say var dap token equals artifacts acquire, and we'll say uh, dap token soul. All right, and to uh, kind of initialize this test suite, we'll say contract, we'll say uh, dap token, and we'll pass it a function. And whenever we, uh, you know, 
pass this callback function, it's going to give us all the accounts that are available that were provided by Ganache. Uh, this will give us all the accounts that are uh, available for testing. We can actually uh, use those for our tests. And we'll say, you know, it uh, sets the total supply upon deployment. All right. Oops, actually, we want to pass this function. All right. And what we'll do is uh, we'll kind of do a lick just like we did in the console. We'll, we'll uh, you know, return adapt token deployed. And then we'll say then function. And we'll say instance. And uh, we'll say the token instance instance. All right, we're basically just uh, caching the instance here to a token instance variable that we'll use uh, in a promise chain. So we'll say return token instance total supply. This is the function that we defined, you know, in our smart contract with our uh, getter. And it's what we used in the console. And we'll also, you know, execute our promise chain here. And we'll pass it a function, a callback function for the total supply. All right. And what we want to do here is check that this total supply is equal to the value that we expect. So we can use the uh, chai assertion library to say assert. And we say equal. And we'll say that uh, the total supply you know, to number uh, is equal to 1 million. And we'll say this sets the total supply to 1 million. All right. We can save this. Now let's uh, see if this works. Copy this file path. We'll do uh, truffle test. This is how we run our tests. Pretty easy. All right, we have one test passing. So let's change this value to make sure our tests work. We'll just change this to you know nine. All right, so we can see that our test works. Oops, we'll run it again. All right, and our test is passing again. Let's go ahead and commit everything that we've done so far. I'm going to initialize a new Git repository, git init. All right, I'm going to check the status. I'm going to add everything, add dot, and let's go ahead and create a new commit. We'll call this one, and we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this smoke test. That's the same thing that we did in the last tutorial. All right, you can see that everything was added. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, push this up to GitHub. Um, I'm going to put a link down to the code in this point in the tutorial with the release. Um, so go ahead and check that link out if you'd like to, you know, follow along with the code in this point in the tutorial. Or if you get stuck, you can feel free to download it and use this as a guide. All right. So a quick addendum to this video. Um, I realized I did something kind of stupid. I put the uh, token sale directory inside of another token sale directory. Uh, so if you have followed along with that, my apologies. That's not what I intended. Um, I'll show you how to clean it up. So from this level, we'll uh, just CD up a level. And uh, we're going to copy all the files from the token sales subdirectory to the parent. So let's do cp-rp token sale. Um, I'm just going to move everything to the current level. All right. We could see uh, ls.l. 
let's actually do AL to ensure that we've copied our Git directory. Okay, looks like everything's correct. So uh, let's get status. All right, we can see that the old token sale directory is still there. So let's remove that. RM-RF token sale. All right, get status. All right, and everything should be good to go. All right, guys, that's the uh, end of the second video in this series about creating your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum and building your own ICO. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can find the next video when it comes out. And if it's already out, you can check the video at the end of the link in this, uh, at the end of this video. And until then, thanks for watching DAP University.